Hello and welcome to this meeting of the Aaron and her missionaries. We sure are glad that you joined us and we pray that God would edify you as a Christian. And if you have never been born again in the Spirit of God, we pray that tonight is the night that Jesus saves your soul. Amen. Amen. And washes your sins away by faith through his blood. We've got an announcement to make. Of course, you know we are missionaries. Uh, so we are missionary minded more uh, probably than most, especially with our message that's not only to the church that Jesus is even at the doors, but especially to a lost and dying world. And we're so thankful and grateful to God that he's opened up doors for us in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And I'm going to ask my dear brother Edward Malumi if he'd come up here. Uh, most of you have seen him before, but not everybody. And I want you to see my dear brother Edward. Uh, he is headed, he is from the Congo and he came here as a refugee. And now he is an American citizen and God has blessed him Amen. up Amen. one side and down the other. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're just uh, uh, incredibly blessed to have him in this world and people like him and to have him in our lives and working with him hand in hand in our ministry. On July the 12th, yeah. Edward is going to get on a big old plane, big old jet plane and go all the way to Africa to the Congo, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and he's going to be there till August the 10th. So I'm going to pray for Edward right now. We are, all of us in this room, and uh, we want you to pray with us. We want you to pray the whole time he's gone, if you will. I think it'd be a great investment. You'll have more return on that investment than most that you'll make. I promise you, he is a faithful man of God. He's taken the message there. And we're going to be working back and forth, answering questions and doing all kinds of stuff and showing videos. But no matter what human energy and human power can do, we need the power of God because only God can change a man's heart. Amen. Only God with his word can change a man or a woman, boy or girl's mind and heart about who he is and their need for the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's pray for our dear brother Edward, and we're going to invite him to, to speak. I'm afraid if I turn him loose right now, he, he'll, he'll preach all night, but uh, we're going to get him up here in the next few weeks and turn him loose and see what uh, God would say through him. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear brother. God, he has been a blessing to me, and I can tell when he walks into the room that he's a blessing to everybody in this room. Amen. Lord, I believe he's a blessing to everybody that he comes in contact with. Amen. And Lord God, I know that he is a, he is a mighty warrior in your hands. I know that Satan would like to defeat him. Satan would like to stop him. And Lord, I just believe that Satan has assigned many a demon to him, powerful demons. But he knows, oh God, Brother Edward, your son knows that greater is he that lives in him than he that's in the world and that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Amen. So Father, he is, has no fear. He has no fear except that, Lord, you might not use him fully uh, because, Lord, we haven't prayed enough or we haven't prepared enough. So Lord, you show us what to do and we'll do it because we want you, Father, to, to use Edward in every mighty way that you have a desire to. And God, that, that the Democratic Republic of the Congo would be turned right side up and God would have a fuller understanding of the day that we're living in and all the signs of the times that are pointing to your imminent return. God, you'd be with Rose and the girls and, and God, and, and you'd show us as a church and as missionaries how to, Lord, even though we can't go with him, we can be with him as we take care of his family nice. while he's gone. Amen. And Lord, we pray that you'd just be so close to him that he, he'd not even think he's walking on the ground, but he's just walking on the air. Lord, because you're carrying him and you're speaking to him and through him. And God, we pray that your word would not return unto you void, but it would, Lord, that it would come through with the purpose for which it was sent. And we'll thank you, God, for what you do. We pray you'd keep him safe and bring him back home Amen. to us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. God bless you, Edward. Thank you, You're welcome, brother. I love you. Thank you. Amen. 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 All right. We've been preaching now for uh, quite a few weeks on spiritual warfare in the last days. And uh, 
America, in a lot of ways, parallels Israel. Amen. Now, like Israel of old, we are witnessing the worship of other gods. Israel had a tendency, especially when they prospered, to turn away from the one true living God and chase after the other gods. And you know the first commandment says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that's always bothered me that I didn't know who these other gods were. And I thank God for those he's brought into my life that has uh, gave me the resources to study and to find out exactly what was going on with Israel and these other gods of their neighbors and see if that indeed is going on in America like it did with them. For you see, the other gods have been exiled 2,000 years ago when Jesus rose from the dead. And therefore, the Holy Spirit has testified of a risen Savior that His words are the Word of God. And you see, and the Word of God and that belief in Jesus Christ and the Word of God, you cannot get saved apart from the Word of God. And you see, when the Word of God came on the scene, authenticated and witnessed to by the Holy Spirit, it swept clean the world of all these other gods. I mean, they function a little bit here and there because they've always been probing to see if they can find a place where the Word of God is not believed and preached, you see. Now we find that America has shunned the Word of God. Now, I don't mean all of America. There's, there's some fine Christian people that, that are living godly lives that love the Word of God. But you see, there's strong influences coming against those that those are not being heard. But those that don't believe in God and don't believe the Word of God, they're the ones getting heard, you see, and not, not God's people. That's because, my friends, so many in the world today have turned to other gods because their heart was empty of the Word of God. You see, and when a heart is empty, according to Matthew 12, verse 45, that the demon that used to be there, that used to be in America, that used to be in the individuals or whatever, when he finds a heart empty and void of the truth, void of the Word of God, that he enters into that person or into that generation, it says in Matthew 12, 45, and brings seven more demons with him, more wicked than himself. And we've been studying this because we have seen now that America, America has ignored God and we ignore God by ignoring his word. Amen. We ignore the word of God. You tell me the last time you heard anybody on TV that wasn't a, 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 a religious program and a lot of them don't do it. But you tell me the last time you heard any of the secular media, entertainment or anybody like that give you some scripture. When's the last time they said according to the Word of God? They haven't, and they don't, you see. And therefore, they have made themselves susceptible and our culture susceptible to the other gods returning after 2,000 years of exile. And now we are looking at them, uh, first of all, with the return of Baal. He's the head dude. He's the first one that always comes. And he ushers in prosperity, you see. And then with prosperity, he brings along a, a, a goddess, Ishtar. And uh, we, we have introduced you to her last week and the week before, I think. And now we're going to find out tonight that Ishtar ushers in Molech. And what you're going to see is they all get more wicked than Baal. And he's as wicked as the devil can be. Amen. Uh, but they, they prove that you can get more wicked than what you can believe. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, show you one more thing before we leave Ishtar. I want to show you the worship of Ishtar last week uh, at Biden's White House abomination just for a few seconds. Excuse me if you find this offensive. If you've got children there, everything is blurred, uh, but you might want to have your children go into the other room real quick. Uh, but I want you to see the abomination that was in White House, in Biden's house, his front yard, his backyard, and in his house that happened last week. <clears throat> Here we have the LGBTQ community there at Biden's White House. 
And you're going to see them in their debauchery. Look at there, the White House in the background. Mm -hmm. That's their worship of Ishtar right there, my friends. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you bring any sound on that? He talks about, you look it up for yourselves and you'll, you'll see and you'll hear him talk about how brave and courageous these people are and got their, uh, where they uh, 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 perverted the rainbow and got the uh, colors of the rainbow in there. And uh, not, you see their flag hanging there at the White House. And, and word is that they were in the White House too in their, their worship of Ishtar. Thank you, Brother Paul. Next, America. We have, now we find ourselves, as you know, in a month of pride. You see, they hang the flag because their message is we're proud of being homosexual. Okay? And they got a whole month of being proud of their sin. And we've been looking in the Bible where the Bible says this will happen in the last days where people will be uh, promoting evil and doing away with good. Here's what we ought to do next. We ought to have a pride month where people that are proud of being adulterers and fornicators. Then the next month, we ought to have a month of pride of people that's proud of being liars and thieves. Amen. It's the same thing. Yes. What they're saying is we are proud that we defy God. We are proud that we defy His Word. And what I want to say to them is you need to understand, my friend, that the Bible says pride goeth before the fall. Mm. Pride goeth before the destruction, you see. Mm -hmm. Now, Baal is always first to repossess someone and then follow closely by Ishtar and then Ishtar lays the groundwork for Molech. Okay? A lot of things are going to come together for you tonight in this study of the other gods. America has been hijacked by greed, by lust, and by selfishness. Amen. The other gods guide humanity into sins classified by God as abominations. Okay, that's a whole nother level of sin. Mo Moloch's name appears several places in the Bible. This is going to blow y'all away tonight. Uh, I can't believe I've been pastoring and preaching for all these years, and I didn't know nothing about none of this. When King Solomon fell away from God, he built high places. He's supposed to have been the smartest man who ever lived, except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he got too smart for his own britches, you see. That's what happens to a lot of people. Amen. They get educated beyond their intelligence. Amen? Amen? And people think they're so smart that they're smart enough to make up their own religion, their own God. Well, Solomon should have stuck to one woman, but he married all these women with all these other gods and these concubines, you see, like God told him not to. And he started chasing after their gods, and he started building them temples. He built them high places, altars, and sanctuaries for these foreign gods with idols in them that relate to the worship and service to the other gods. Okay? And one of them was Molech. Look at it in 1 Kings 11 and verse 7. Then did Solomon build a high place for um, Kamois is the way you say that. Kamoitz, the abomination of Moab, okay? And this is the head god, which we know is Baal, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. You see, Molech running with Baal. And so notice that these two um, are called abominations to worship other gods according to God, is an abomination. Amen? Amen? And so horrifyingly dangerous. It's horrifyingly dangerous for any individual that would worship any other idol than God Almighty because the consequences are eternal. And my friends, it is, it is horrifyingly dangerous that so many in America have turned from Jehovah God and now chase after other gods, you see. And the consequences are dire. 
And the consequences, my friend, are coming soon. We are not getting better. We're getting worse and worse and Amen. worse. Amen. And we need a true revival that will sweep across this whole country. I mean, a, an earth-shattering, heartbreaking, Christ-saving revival where people truly get saved. You see, we're seeing revivals with God's people where People are getting in the Spirit of God. But I'm talking about an overflowing of conviction where people are broken because they see what's going on and sinners get saved. You see, that's when you know you're in a true revival, Brother Edwards, when thousands and thousands of people get yeah. saved. Then you'll see this country turn the other way. Amen. But according to 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 3, there's a great falling away that comes right before the Lord returns, you see. And that's what we're witnessing right now. The earliest scriptures warns of the evil of associating with Baal or Ishtar or Molech. Look at it in Leviticus 18 verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire of Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Amen. You see that? Mm-hmm. They were told not to. God warned them. See, today people think you don't have to listen to God. You can do whatever you want to. Yeah. And, but we, have, we can look back on it now and see what happened to them when they decided not to listen to God, when they were God's people, and how God punished them, disciplined them for it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, I love King Josiah. I don't know how familiar you are with King Josiah. But Josiah is the righteous king. He set about restoring Israel back to God. Did you know that King Josiah became king when he was eight years old? He reigned for 31 years. At the age of 16, he started major religious reforms throughout Israel. He returned the official worship to Yahweh only. He restored the temple and he returned. This is a 16-year-old king now. And he restored the temple and he returned the Ark of the Covenant back to the temple. He walked in the way of his father David and turned not aside to the right or to the left. And you'll find these writings in 2 Kings 22, 2 and chapter 34, verse 2. And what he did was he went around and he began to destroy all the altars to uh, with their idols, you see. The altar would always be under the idol. And he executed the priests of the other gods. Why, he even went and dug up the bones of those priests that had died so he could burn them with the priests that he executed. 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 10 tells us a little bit about King Josiah. And he, speaking of King Josiah, defiled Topheth which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire of Molech. He was knocking them down. He was destroying them, made it against the law to worship them. And Molech, you see, was the God that demanded sacrifice of human beings. He demanded to be worshiped by the sacrifice, particularly of children. Okay? Even darker children were to be sacrificed by their own parents. And the Bible <clears throat> speaks of the act as the most grievous of sins, even as an abomination. The sacrifice of children is a sure sign a nation has turned from the one true living God. Or never knew him in the first place. Many in America have tur totally turned from the ways of God. The progressive Democrats have totally rejected the Word of God. Amen. And will yes. do anything and say anything <laughs> and allow anything just to pick up a segment of the population for a vote. Amen. The mainstream media and their coverage, if it's against God, if it's, if it's against the Word of God, and five people show up to the demonstration, they'll put it on there like it's some kind of earth-shaking event. Five people milling around there. 
And they'll cover everything the devil wants them to cover and just leave off whatever God's doing or what God's people's doing. Yeah. The entertainment industry leaving God out and actively fighting against the word of God. They want you to think. They want you to think and believe that everybody is that way. But it's not true. It's not true. There's a lot of people that say like me tonight, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come what may, we know the truth because God has revealed it to us through his Holy Spirit by his word that Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And one day, my friend, you're going to bow because every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. You ought to do it on this side of eternity so that you go up and sit it down. Amen. Amen. The worship Amen. of Molech was that of child sacrifice. The Bible says Israel did it, believe it or not, knowing better, been told better. Israel did it. So did the Canaanites. The Romans did it. The Greeks did it. The Felicians did it. The African colony of the Carthaginians did it. Now in modern history, America is doing it. It has been doing it. And America has influenced the entire Western civilization to do the same. Here is a picture of what Moloch worship would look like. You have the priest offering to the idol Moloch the child to be cast into the fire. Then you got the parents. We say this could even be the parents whose child is being offered. Thinking you're doing something for this God that this statue represents. What I see today is the politicians right here. <laughs> huh? yeah. What I see today is, 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 is a lot of the entertainment industry right here. Yes. What I see today is a lot of the news media right here, you see? And people saying that they're Christian. We got a governor that says he's a Christian, but yet I see him wanting to hand the babies to Molech. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. News media and different outlets and entertainment saying they're Christian, saying they're good, saying they're for people, but yet they are acting as the priests of Molech and taking the unborn taking the unborn before they ever have a chance at life and kill them in their mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Still today, there's a big push going and I'm glad for it and we ought to pray for it every day. If one child is saved, and I believe already children are being saved, but there's still a lot more work to do. The devil ain't gave up. Molech has not gave up. He's still after unborn children. He's still after children after they're born. Amen. Yep. He is after your children, you see, to destroy them with unbelief. Mm -hmm. The most dangerous place for a child to be in America today is still in his mother's womb. Amen. Amen. It's hard to believe that a people that knew God would turn to Molech as their God. Every time I see one of these politicians get up and act like they're so good and so righteous, but yet push to keep abortion in place, mm -hmm. it makes me want to throw up. It, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to believe that somebody can say, I'm a Christian, but deny the word of God. Look at Jeremiah 32 and verse 35. What a saddest indictment you'll ever hear about somebody that's supposed to love the Lord. And they built the high places of Baal, talking about God's people. Talking about the people that God brought out of Egypt, brought through the Red Sea, brought them through the wilderness, brought them into the promised land. He saved them. He saved them. Right. This is God's people. They know God. They know who God is, but they built high places of Baal which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire of Mo unto Molech, which I commanded them not. Neither came it unto my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. God just couldn't believe that somebody could be that ignorant and that mean and that deceived. How could you fathom that anybody, I don't care what kind of priest, 
I don't care what kind of politician. I don't care who it is. How can anybody convince someone to offer their son or their daughter to a fire? This is the bottom of the barrel of sins, my friends. It's an abomination. And it's happening all over the world. It is not safe. It was not safe to be a child in the pagan, ancient pagan world. And it's not safe for a child in America who has become pagan. Let me show you the Bible's view on children, including unborn children. All children are created in the image of God. That's, that's enough said right there. Right. Okay, but we got quite a bit more to say. All people have infinite value. It don't matter if you're poor. It don't matter if you're rich. It don't matter if you're going to be born uh, with some kind of mental handicap or physical handicap. Everyone has equal value in the sight of God. They're all created in the image of God. Children are a gift from the Lord. Look what he says in Psalms 123, 127, verse 3. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Heritage means they're his. Amen. They're his. Including the unborn children, they belong to God. And they are to be treated as a precious, precious gift from God that he has entrusted us with. Amen? Amen. Look at Psalms 139, verses 13 through 16. Now, y'all mark this on your sheets because you'll, you'll need it as life goes on. For thou, speaking of God, hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. In other words, you made me inside and outside. You made the inside of me and you made the outside of me while I was in my mother's womb. Andy, haven't you read this? Verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Amen. Yeah. Somebody, God made this, right? God made this. Man did not make this. God had to make human beings. Look at verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret. In other words, God... Uh, you knew exactly what was going inside on uh, when I was being made because you're the one that was making me and forming me in my mother's womb and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thy eyes did see my substance. See that? Very, the very second of conception, God knows that person. Amen. Yes. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, yet being mature, yet being made all the way. You see me when I was just that first, that, what is it, an ebre? Is that what it's called? Embryo. Embryo, there you go. <laughs> I tried to go Mexican on that thing. But <laughs> God, listen, God knew us when we were first planted in our mother's womb. Amen. Before we ever start to mature. And in thy book, all my members were written. Before, listen, before my mother got pregnant, God had me wrote down in his book. He had what that finger was going to look like. It looks just like my daddy's finger. It looks just like my grandma's finger. You see, God had it all wrote down. He had this big old nose wrote down, these big ears wrote down. He knew exactly who I was and what, and he knew you before you were ever completely formed because all your members were written in his book, which in countenance were fashioned when as yet they were as none of them. Even before they was made, God had a record. Amen. Don't Amen. tell me. Don't tell me, my friends, that in, that. Uh, uh, a fetus is not an unborn human being with a soul that God is making in that mother's womb. God is maturing in that mother's womb. When a child is born, it's really nine months old. Amen? You ever thought of yes. that? It's really nine months old. Okay? Now look at this. Now I want all the politicians to listen to me. I want all you radical feminists to listen to me. 
I want all of you for convenience sake want to kill your unborn baby. Matthew 18 and verse 6 says, you can, listen, you can put this behind you and not think about it, but I'm praying right now that God would stay on your heart, stay on your mind with conviction that you might repent and get saved. That's the whole purpose of this. Matthew 18 and verse 6, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones. Mm -hmm. Of course, killing them, I believe, offends them. Amen. Amen. And they are around the throne right now asking when their blood will be avenged. But whoever offends one of these little ones which believe in me, it would, better off, it would be better for him that a milestone were hanged around his neck and that he was drowned in the death Amen. of the sea. And of course, he's talking about children that have been born, but it applies, as we've already seen, to those that are unborn as well. Abortion was brought down was brought down from Molech, the other god. I keep thinking he's on the screen. Listen to this early Christian apologist, Marcus Minucius Felix. It's on your paper there, but I didn't write down the quotes. You can look him up. He wrote this in the early days of Christianity of the link of abortion and pagan gods. So they commit murder. Amen. See, they knew it was Amen. murder 2,000 Amen. years ago. Yeah. They commit murder before they bring forth. Mm -hmm. And these things assuredly come down from the teaching of your gods. Mm -hmm. Molech, he's here. He's here. Mm -hmm. And abortion is a form of worshiping him. Amen. Discarding your children and not cherishing them and loving them and taking care of them. Amen. That is a form of worshiping and serving Moloch. The Christian faith ex exiled the other gods, including Molech. But the sign that America has turned from the one true living God is that she will be killing her children. And let me tell you something else. Every time God does something big in this world, people are killing children. Amen. When he sent Moses down to deliver the children of Israel, they were killing babies. When Jesus came, they were killing babies. My friends, we are killing them by the millions. You better be looking up and being watchful, for I am certain that our redemption is drawing nigh. Russia, talking about when the other gods came, Russia was the first to renounce the word of God. They were the first to renounce Christianity, okay? So they were the first to legal, legalize abortion in 1920. Molech, in his bloodlust, just a few years later, turned a demon-possessed man named Adolf Hitler and his Nazis loose on children, families, especially Jewish children, mm -hmm. and the innocent blood. First, it was Baal re-entering Western civilization, particularly America in the 1940s. Then comes Ishtar in the 1960s with the sexual revolution. Then comes Molech in 1973, January the 22nd. Abortion was legalized in America. Since then, America has become one nation not under God, even though there's a lot of Christian people here, but I'm talking about the decision makers. I'm talking about the movers and shakers. Amen. I'm talking about the ones that puts the stuff on that television that we watch every night, and that stuff on the radio we listen to, that stuff on the internet we look at, one nation under Baal and his cabinet, Ishtar and Molech. We are living in Baal's America where one can forge one's own uh, idol, one can fashion one's own truth, one can imagine one's own values. There is no more absolutes because everyone's opinion is an absolute truth. Mm -hmm. These things can't be. Mm -hmm. I hope you watched Tony Evans this morning talking about his daddy and his daddy getting saved when, when Tony was just a boy. 
and he changed him. I mean, radical change. He said he didn't kind of get saved. He got radically saved. Mm -hmm. Everything changed in his household. He said from then on, he said he'd read the Bible every day. He said when we go to supper, he'd bust out the Bible and make sure we got some of it. And then he'd pray. Well, he's going to get some Bible. Because he knew that one day we'd leave and he wouldn't be with us, but we wouldn't be able to get away from the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Any of you that had a godly mom or a godly dad knows what I'm talking about, you see. And he would always say, whenever anybody would ask him anything or he'd say something, he'd always say this. And I'll never forget him saying this. Well, according to the Scripture. Yeah. That's a wonderful statement. Everything that comes out of our mouth like that, I'll say, well, according to what God says. God says this according to the scripture. That's why we got to learn it so that we can speak it, amen, and show people where it's at. You see, we can talk all day long we want to to somebody, but that ain't what will cut their heart. It's the word of God that's like a two-edged sword, you see. That's what we got to be armed with is the word of God so that when we're witnessing and when we're talking, we can say, well, according to the scripture. And if you want to argue with that, you can argue with God. I'm just telling you what God said. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In America today, in Bell's America, everyone does what's right in their own eyes. Bell has ushered in Ishtar. Prosperity has ushered in the sexual revolution, which has ushered in Molech, the killing of the unwanted babies that the sexual revolution has produced. Children conceived on Ishtar's altars of unwed sex has produced millions of unwanted babies. And then there's those that are married, but the pregnancy is an inconvenience. It's going to mess with my career. It's going to saddle me down, you see. So then they are offered. They are offered because of Ishtar's revolution of thinking mm -hmm. they are offered on Molech's altar just like ancient time millions right here in America millions of unborn children have been sacrificed on Molech's altar around the world I was in a revival meeting one time and this woman was just up at the altar crying her eyeballs out I mean just uncontrollable and when it was over, she went up, she was talking to the preacher for quite a while, and then finally she had agreed to let him tell, or let her tell, what she was so broken about. And she was the head nurse on the floor that done abortions, where she was at, in the hospital she was in. And she said, I am losing my mind. It's because we'll go into a room and a doctor will pull a, a live baby out of a mother's womb and throw it in the garbage can. They said, that's bad enough, but when we come back, there's another mother there. He'll take that next baby out alive and that other one's still over in the garbage can and wiggling and squirming and trying to live and throw another baby on top of it. And my friends, you wanna tell me that God is going to weak, wink at our sin? Of worshiping other gods. We see the judgment now, Brother Doug. We see judgment on us right now. America, who once was a shining city on a hill, has now become a blood-soaked high place of Molech. So I want you, as a way of invitation, to consider these two verses, two great verses. Isaiah 2, 17 and 18. Here's what's coming. Here's what's coming. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. And the halting. Now see, this will give you some sympathy for all those that you see acting like those priests handing those babies. Saying abortion, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with homosexuality. There's nothing wrong with adultery. There's nothing wrong with fornication. There's nothing wrong with being disobedient to parents. There's nothing wrong with stealing. There's nothing wrong with lying. On down the line. You can have some sympathy for him when you see this. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. And the haughtiness of men shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Their day's coming. Their day's coming. 
And we, listen, we've got to love them, but we've got to tell them the truth. And the reason I talk about politicians the way I do is because I want them to see the truth that God might save their soul. Amen? Mm -hmm. But to have to turn to God and accept the truth, you see? They've got so many different versions of the Bible now, they can make them say whatever they want them to say. Mm -hmm. Get you one of those good old King James Bibles and read it. And read it, my friends. God, listen, God turned this country upside down with that King James Bible. Amen. Just stick with that. Just stick with it. I mean, I read the others like commentaries, but I always go back when there's a difference. I always go back to that old King James because I know God used that before all the others started coming along. I don't know which one of them's the truth, so I just leave them alone. Then it says, and the idols he shall utterly, utterly abolish. So what you need to do, my friends, today, listen, I'm not the sharpest knife in the box and I don't know anything. Save this. I know that Jesus saved my soul. Mm -hmm. I know that because he lives in me and he's lived in me now from now on 40 years. He's never left. He's never forsaken me. I got saved when I was 23 years old and he turned my life around. I look at things different. I think different. He changed me from the inside out. I know he lives because he lives in my heart. And I know his word is true because you can trust. Every, if I can't trust it all, I can't trust none of it. So my friends, what you need to do today is to utterly abolish all those idols that you're living for and those other gods that are lying to you and deceiving you and come to the one true living God through his son, Jesus Christ. Would you? Would you? Do you have somebody that you know and that you love that is blinded and deceived by the wickedness of this world today? Why don't you come right now and get on your knees before a holy God and ask God to do a work in their heart. It's got to be him that does it, my friend, or it won't get done. We need to ask God for mercy. We need to ask God for help. We need to ask God to save us if we're lost. Would you come? Father, help him come. Help them come right now and bow down on an old-fashioned altar where the blood of Jesus can wash away their sin as they repent and believe on you, oh God. Father, please, in Jesus' name, let us as Christian people become prayer warriors. And God, not just a minute here and there, but an hour here and two hours there and a whole night there with fasting. God, let us get serious. Let it, give us a glimpse of hell. Give us a glimpse of judgment. Give us a glimpse of where all those without Jesus Christ are going. And give us that empathy. Give us that, give us that love and forgiveness for those that even oppose themselves. For those that consider us enemies and treat us like their enemies. Let us have the heart that Jesus had that we might do good to them. Lord, that we might do good to them and love them. Would you? God, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, beloved.